Hello guys, previously we discussed redox reactions. Redox reaction in itself is not that useful. In order to use it properly, we should separate the oxidized substance from the reduced one. So today we are going to discuss electrochemical cell types and definition. Basically, there are two types of electrochemical cell. The galvanic or voltaic cell and the electrolytic cell. An electrochemical cell is a device capable of generating electrical energy from chemical reactions or facilitating chemical reactions through the introduction of electrical energy. The cell which generates electrical energy from chemical reactions is called galvanic cell or voltaic cell. Basically, galvanic cell is composed of three major parts, anode half cell, cathode half cell and the saw bridge. To illustrate the basic principles of a galvanic cell, let's consider the reaction of metallic zinc with cupric ion to give copper metal and zinc 2 plus ion. We can cause this reaction to occur by inserting a zinc rod into an aqueous solution of copper 2 sulfate. As the reaction proceeds, the zinc rod dissolves and metallic copper is formed. These changes occur spontaneously, but all the energy released is in the form of heat, rather than in a form that can be used to do work. This figure shows the dissolving of zinc metal in copper 2 sulfate solution. Giving copper precipitate on the zinc rod, we can't use this reaction for generating electrical current. Galvanic cells harness the electrical energy available from the electron transfer in a redox reaction to perform useful electrical work. The key to gathering the electron flow is to separate the oxidation and reduction half cells, connecting them by a wire so that the electrons must flow through that wire. That electron flow, called a current, can be sent through a circuit which could be part of any number of electrical devices such as radios, TVs or watches. This figure shows two typical setups for a galvanic cell. The left hand cell shows oxidation and reduction half cells joined by both a wire and a porous disc. While the right hand cell diagram shows the same cell substituting a cell, a cell bridge for the porous disc. The cell bridge or porous disc is necessary to maintain the charge neutrality of each half cell. By allowing the flow of ions with minimal mixing of the half cell solutions, also passing the current through the solution by the movement of ions. As electrons are transferred from the oxidation half cell to the reduction half cell, a negative charge builds in the reduction half cell solution and a positive charge builds in the oxidation half cell solution. This figure points out that the electrode in the oxidation half cell is called the anode and the electrode in the reduction half cell is called the cathode. So always remember that oxidation proceeds at the anode and reduction proceeds at the cathode. The anode at the source of negatively charged electrons is usually marked with minus sign and the cathode is marked with a plus sign. This figure shows an example of a voltaic cell. This cell is made of zinc rod at the anode and copper at the cathode. Both immersed in one of their solutions, the two rods are connected with a wire so the electrons can flow from the anode to the cathode. And a saw bridge connects the solutions with each other so ions can migrate between two half cells and complete the circuit. In the oxidation half cell, zinc is oxidized and loses two electrons. And in the reduction half cell, Cu2 plus ion gains two electrons and is deposited on cover rod. The second type of electrochemical cell is the electrolytic cell. Unlike galvanic cells, electrolytic cells consume electrical energy from an outside source, EMF, to make an unspontaneous redox reaction. 
For example, a galvanic cell can be made from the spontaneous reaction of hydrogen and oxygen to produce water and electricity. But an electrolytic cell can combine water and electricity to produce hydrogen and oxygen in a non-spontaneous reaction. An electrolytic cell can be used for the production of pure metals from their ores and in electroplating. We will discuss the applications of electrolytic cells in the next videos. So here is an example of the construction of an electrolytic cell. This cell is used to obtain chlorine and hydrogen gases from the electrolysis of sodium chloride solution. There must be a battery for the reaction to proceed. At the anode, Cl- ions lose electrons, so chlorine gas can be obtained. And at the cathode, H plus ions gain electrons, so hydrogen molecule can be formed. Okay guys, here is a total recap of what we've learned today. In the galvanic cell, the reaction proceeds spontaneously, and in the electrolytic cell, it proceeds non-spontaneously.